How did your year go? How did our year go? We're about to do a review right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're doing something a little bit different. We are gonna do a 2022 year in review where we take a look back at all of our projects and everything that we've done this year. And we will be hosting this little review with Tanner doing all the question asking. Yeah, we thought this would be a little bit fun for the last video of the year. Let's take a little look back so and we see how things went. We don't know what's coming. Tanner put this together. Uh, he'll be asking us questions and we'll be reacting real time, I guess. Well, real time. <laughs> so your most viewed video on the year is your DTF printer setup. How do you feel about that? Wow, I'm kind of shocked that that is our most viewed video. I'm gonna to have to say that's probably my favorite new tool or toy that we got here for the workshop. But yeah, yeah, I think that's one of the biggest toys that we got this year. It's very exciting for yeah, us because I was on it. we are looking to transform what our door rounds look like with this DTF printer. Let's take it to a whole other level. Except we haven't really done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we haven't done it. We've, we've made some t-shirts and we put it on a couple of things, but Kim, Kim kind of killed the machine right now, so it's in pieces. Well, and before I did that, um, the biggest surprise about this printer is, uh, you know... How much maintenance? Yes, there's a lot of maintenance. But uh, our neighbor next door, oh. you know, she was looking for DTF printers and researching DTF printers, their t-shirt business next door, and they were like, hey, I was looking th looking up videos and we saw your video on DTF. Do you guys do DTF? Can you print some t-shirts for us? Like small runs, small batches. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. that's that's part of the reason we got this Kim thing. Kim loves to uh, say yes. Uh, yeah. Kim will uh, not I say will no. Always overcommit. Always. Always overcommit. And then I have to over deliver. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> we, we pull it out, we pull it out. <laughs> So the thing about that was, I was like, yeah, sure thing. So then she started giving us t-shirt order after t-shirt order, small runs, 10, 15. That's where you kind of took over the whole machine. I I know maintenance, that's about it. Otherwise, all the color and the well, color Well, the reason why I said is. yes is because I wanted to learn. I said, this is gonna force us to really learn how to maintenance this thing efficiently, how to make sure, you know, how to operate it efficiently. Yeah. Just jump learn. right into the fire, huh? Yes, yeah. yeah, because I had to deliver a good product to her. So it wasn't so much the t-shirts, we were just doing the transfers. So we just yeah. had to print. I never and, planned on using it for t-shirts. And it was just printing transfers. I was like, hey, it's the same thing. If I'm gonna print it and melt the glue on it, then we, it doesn't matter what you put it yeah, on, it door round or a t-shirt, I still have to get it right, get the color settings right. And so... To me, this was just the first step in letting you buy, or letting me buy Having you let me buy a <laughs> UV printer. That's that my end goal is a UV printer. And I thought if I could prove with the DTF that it goes on wood and look, it takes our science to the whole other level, you'd be like, yes, let's get that UV printer. Well, we printed so many transfers for her that it was running all the time. Yeah, nonstop. It's super slow. Um, for running like a business. So, uh, you know, we could do one every 30 minutes and when you're doing 15 of them, it's going to take longer than a day or it's gonna take the entire day. So I, I found that it was using more of my time than I had planned. Yeah. So, so yes, and then we did learn to efficiently maintenance it. And during one of those maintenance, well, I have since There was a maintenance how, mishap. Yeah, yeah. I did a little cleaning of the print heads, but I didn't power it off. And so I fried the print head and now it's down. And I've had, at least it's, I've gotten a little break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least you've gotten a break. But I still love the thing and we will be replacing that print head. And uh, hopefully she's back up and running in a couple of weeks. And I'm taking our signs to a whole other level. Yeah, then we're gonna, still then we're gonna use it for what we bought it for. All right, I've got the top three videos of the year for you. Okay. And this is number two. 
All right. It is the sublimate cotton t-shirts with DTF powder. Sublimate cotton tees with DTF powder did not work for us. Now we got a lot of comments saying that it works and that we're crazy. I don't know, did we bake it too long? There was a lot of behind the scenes trial and error too. Like I tried to bake it, I tried not baking it at all. I put the DTF powder and I tried pressing it. I tried baking it for a minute. I tried baking it at 350, 650. <laughs> I tried everything. Well, the funny thing about this video- And then when I video... thought I got it down the best, that's kind of when we went video and <laughs> still not best. Well, the funny thing about this video is it wasn't something that we needed to do or was going to be useful. It was kind of a TikTok hack that we had seen. Yeah. And we just thought, hey, I'm looking for a video for this week. And I think this is kind of cool. Let's see if it'll work. Yeah, let's see if it works. It was just kind of a thing on the whim. So I can't believe it ends up being the second most popular video of the year when it was hey, let's try this TikTok hack. Well, I think so, DTF is like a buzzword in the craft community right now. And it's like, ooh, Well, DTF, DTF and sublimation, so I guess yeah, they were two, guess so. two hot topics. Yeah, that's and... like just saying Reese's peanut butter cup. <laughs> and so putting them together was probably, you know, two hey, let's taste. see what they can do with it. Mm -hmm. Although we didn't we didn't get it to work, really. <laughs> no, nah, ours, our uh, Reese's peanut butter cup was very schmelty. Yeah. Definitely. Now your third most popular video of the year is pretty new, like brand new, and it's really shooting up there. It is the OM Tech Polar Laser. Oh, the OM Tech Polar Laser. Just the unboxing. Yeah. yeah, wow. That, well, I don't see why it wouldn't. It's a great little machine. I see nothing wrong with it. I see improvements that I would have liked to have seen in the Glowforge in the OM Tech, like the better air assist, not just a a computer fan kind of spitting at the uh, at the materials but like true air assist yeah so. I was really really excited when we got this in I really wanted to see what this thing could do I was really excited that it works with light burn I can't wait to do more with it so you're right it is the most recent video uh, and I think I'm, I'm still just stoked. in the month of December we published that so I can't wait to do tumblers yeah more projects with it so. like I'm really really chomping at the bit to do a tumbler. Like, I wanna see how fast a 50 watt laser can do a tumbler. Yeah. If the, if the little 10 watt thing from Xtool can do a tumbler in like 30 minutes, what will it do with 50 watts? Well, and when you do a tumbler, I wanna do something else that will require the use of Ooh, yeah. the rotary tools. What so. if we did like golf balls? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I want to do something else round like, like that. baseballs, yeah. softballs. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> A grapefruit. So we know the top three videos of the year. What do you think did the worst? Oh, the worst? What do I think did the worst? The door that we turned into a clock. Well, I personally liked that project. I was excited about it. I wanted to do it. I got to go pick out the door. I thought it was really cool to test it for lead paint. I didn't even know that little I tool. I didn't know that was available. Yeah. yeah. I like that. So, um, and I wanted that distressed look. It's actually still in our front workshop area. It's a functional clock. It is. And, and we use it. And I think it, it adds to the aesthetic. So just want to know it's time it to did, go home. It did what I wanted it to do. I guess I just I feel like we needed to take it to a whole other level, and maybe filled it with resin. I don't know. Just no. I think put some LEDs back there. And then I fill think it, with it was resin. a bad thumbnail. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what was the hardest project that you did this year? Our hardest project this yeah. year? And what made it so hard? Well, just right off the bat, I think it's the Beauty and the Beast inspired cabinet for me. Ooh, or the craft show booth makeover. It's one of those two. Everything else, I think, was all doable. When we got into the paint on the Beauty and the Beast cabinet, remember? We were like, oh yeah, well we saw how you do the swirling paint effect. Yeah. This is how we'll do it. Yeah. And that took way longer than you guys we had planned. have no idea how long or how many times we repainted it. We yeah. Or practiced fixed it. We yes. Fixed it and then 
fixed it and then fixed Because you it. had to blend dark blue into light blue. And so we're like, I mean, that's easy. Yes. You just a well, little dark they... blue on the outside and now we're gonna put the light blue and then we're just gonna blend. But it and didn't blend. blend. It just kept swirling. Yeah. And I was like, no, I don't want to swirl. I need to blend. I need a fade. And so we were like, more light blue. Oh, no, no, it, we're too, too far. Light. Yeah, we're too far into the dark blue. Let's add a little dark blue. And we were going around, and then it was just swirls of dark and blue. And then trying to get them to kind of match the different boxes to then kind of match fading in the same yeah. like this the fade was a three inch fade or something like that no we argued and we were like no let me do it that is no, not how you do it no let me do it no no that's not how you do it it's like how in art class this is how we did it and i was like okay well i watched a bunch of people do it i've done it before why can't i get this to fade so yeah we we struggled with that. That's that why was, I became a, a two-parter. That's because it took uh, us what four hours to just to paint to a fade, square to fade that dark blue into light blue. Yeah, <laughs> but in the end, it came out great with all the little glowforge pieces that we added to it. The well, it's still not side. where I really wanted to be. It's what? not really. If that fade doesn't look like I really wanted it to look, but oh, it, I it, the fade it, it, good. it got to an acceptable level. Oh, an acceptable level. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's not rehash anything, Kim. <laughs> what was your hardest project? Do you think it was the same one? One of the ones that I could think of that never even made it to a project was us trying to use the powder coat. Filling and engraving with powder coat. Yes, that's yeah. a vid video that never was a video. I the other day I was cleaning out the glow forge and I still found powder all up in there, the green fluorescent powder. Yeah. So we saw someone do this and we thought it would be cool to try and show you guys, hey, look what you can do with powder coat, which is what you use to paint cars with. Like metal um, things. You metal, know. yeah. You dust the metal with it and then you bake it at like 450 degrees for like an hour or something. So we saw that you can do that with the laser. So the laser essentially bakes the powder and hardens it. So that, that never happened. We never got it to work. Hours of, hours of trial and error. Yes. Two days. Two, two days, yeah. Two, two days. days of we worked on this, trying to make it this week's video kind of thing. And the and powder was blowing everywhere. And we had to switch gears and move to another project. Yeah, last minute. <laughs> last minute project change. So that's one of the hardest ones. That's a, That was so hard it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, that. I, was, I remember just yelling, why would anybody want to do this? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, you guys never saw that, but we worked really hard. On there there might have been boards thrown across the room. There was boards thrown across the room. It's a lot of drama. A lot of drama. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of drama. That thing would not work. And I, I'd be like, okay, I got new settings. It's gonna work. Didn't work. <laughs> like thousands of attempts. I'm gonna say tens of thousands of attempts. <laughs> Hundred thousand attempts. One million attempts. Yeah. One million attempts. Wow, okay. All right, enough with your YouTube videos. <laughs> Let's talk about new toys. We mentioned the DTF printer. Yep. We mentioned the OM Tech. What else did you get this year? What else did we get this year? Um, we got a full-size heat press. That was fun. Yeah, full-size heat press. I love that thing, especially yes. it's on a timer. And, and it's pressurized. Our, our friends from Heat Press Nation gave us a good deal on that. So um, we love those guys over there. Yeah. They're fun to work with. And it's been a great product. And what? I'm surprised you got the heat press before this one. You got the X tool this year. Oh, the X tool is this year. Gosh. Yeah, that is a great little guy. Yes. Man, that seems forever yes. ago. And so many of you bought the X tool. So the, I just hear from a lot of you guys using it. It's a great way to be introduced to lasers. In the laser I just game. think that, yeah, I think that is a great, great little starter laser. If you want to see what lasers are all about, it is a small guy that can sit on a desktop. It can be moved. It can come back. 
You don't have to go too deep into the pocket or something like that. Yeah, it's a super affordable price. You can start doing earrings, keychains, you know, small craft items nah, that you can sell. I wouldn't say small. I mean, it's a uh, good 16, 16 by 17. Yeah. yeah, 16 by 17, something like that. Yeah, you can so, engrave on things. With a tumbler attachment. I yeah. Mean, uh, oh, yeah. And it also has a tumbler can't attachment. Can't shake a stick at that thing. So what is that? 40 watts? I think it's 10. 10 watts so it's a it's not very powerful but i think you could do lots of things with it oh it'll go through eighth inch baltic birch all day long engrave on leather you know you could do fun right. things yeah, with you guys did a lot of projects with it this year yeah i yeah. guess we did do a lot you of did projects leather with it wallet. oh that's right leather you wallet. your skateboard oh yeah oh, i did yeah. engrave my skateboard <laughs> you did tumblers you did yeah. the uh, whiskey glass, I believe. That was all. Oh, that was cool. Glass. Yes, yeah, we engraved cool. on the glass. Yeah. What was your favorite craft show of the year? My favorite craft show. Oh, easy. Pocosin. 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 <laughs> yeah. If anybody's watching from Pocosin, leave us a comment down below. We love that one. It's the Pocosin yeah. Seafood Festival. We'll be back. Good yeah. food, good music. I don't know, man. Lake Fest was also a really good Virginia one. Virginia Lake Fest. That's when the uh, that was also tornado good food. came through at the oh, very end. That's right. <laughs> oh, wait, was yeah. that that one? That one was a good one. What was the one where we had the corner right across from the live music? What one was that one? I don't know. Oh, that so is Matthew's, Matthew's. Matthew's Market Days. Yeah, it was Pocosin. Yeah. Or Matthew's Market Days for me. Because. Both of those were good food, good music, good time, good people, <laughs> good time. Aquaquan, that was a good one too. Oh, Aquaquan was a good one. Yeah, that was down by the water and um, it was like a cool we right little towny the area. The little, the little shops and everything Can were really cool. Can you tell yeah. which ones I liked? It was ones where we were by the food and the music. <laughs> What was yeah. your biggest takeaway on starting the bigger craft shows this year? The well, yeah, that was our thing for this year. So up to this point, we've done farmer's markets and we've done um, a couple of different farmer's markets. So we did the one that's really close to our house. So that was really convenient to get to. Yeah. And that's how we like got, got started. Yeah. yeah, definitely got our feet wet. Kind of wading then, into the pool. Then last year we moved into in the fall and over January, February, and March, we were in um, what's well, called the RVA Big Market, which is also kind of a farmer's market, but on a much larger scale. Um, and that was outdoors too. So both of those are outdoor shows. And our first real indoor craft show was last January. Oh, during the ice storm. And then we just ramped up from there. That yeah. was really great. The, the biggest one that we had started with in the spring was Arts in the Park. And that was a great one too. That's a Richmond yeah. classic. That's a Richmond classic. It, it is a, a Richmond classic. So, and it was, it was a really big show. I don't know really how many show. vendors, 750 vendors or something. something there like was that, just yeah. tons of vendors. It's a huge show. Um, three, we had a really big, we, yeah, there was the first time that we was had the first to make three day. Yes, it was three days. We had to make tons and tons of product. And so that was um, one of the things you're probably getting ready to go in there. What we learned about it. Is that That's what you asked right. me? Your lessons learned. Yeah, lessons learned. <laughs> Start earlier. Yes, we really learned how to better estimate how much product we need for the show. Um, we started to learn that, you know, if it's a three day show, if it's a holiday show, it's what the attendance numbers are expected to be, allowed us to yeah. better uh, right. estimate how much product we needed to bring. And the amount of product we needed to bring kind of dictated how our booth setup changed. We went from using the dividers and stuff to using the metal racks. Because we so that we could display more. Display more. And, and, and we well, needed something that was easy to come and go. Yes. We really learned how to set up and break down our Yeah, booth. you want to be able to set up quickly and break it down quickly. We want to make sure that we have a variety, uh, a variety of signs to meet different tastes. But not a bodega. Also, know your best sellers and make sure that you have a ton of those. You also started 
workshops officially. What's your biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway is that people love doing them. People love coming to hang out and painting something that they can use in the end. Yeah, it is they have the most fun. Yeah, it's fun. I, ha it, what a, I mean, it's hard to think that that's a job. I mean, um, I'm glad they pay me, but I love hanging out with them. Well, everybody leaves. My biggest surprise with that is everyone leaves happy. Like, everyone loves their project when they're done. We yes. haven't had a single person leave here disappointed. They did not have a giant smile oh. on their face. Well, maybe one one couple, they had, um, they did a, a kind of a difficult project and she got a little overwhelmed, the one girl. That might have, they might have been unhappy because I wasn't attending that workshop. <laughs> I think that might have spoiled it. Just Gare, in general. Here, I it's pro maybe because you guys would be surprised that when Garrett gets in there and starts laughing and joking with everyone, um, the, it just kind of brings the spirits up even more. So, like everybody starts having a good time and teasing and laughing and yep. joking. It's loud. Yeah, yeah, everybody loosens up, and it's even more fun. Yeah. Everyone loves a good food poisoning prank. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the old food poisoning prank. Yeah, I don't. If you guys haven't heard that story, the first workshop we ever did for our friends and family was on April Fool's Day, and we ordered food in, and everybody had sub sandwiches and chips and some cookies. And a kid made a big to do about was, the food order. I, yes, I wanted. To, I insisted that we have food for everyone, that we feed everyone. And I was busy running around because it was the first time we had done this and I was trying to make sure everyone was happy. Everything was perfect. Everyone had what they needed. We were making bows and I was like mega ultra focused on making sure this workshop was successful. And then Garrett comes up to me and says... No, I was on the phone. Yeah, comes past me on the phone, fake phone call, and says, oh, okay, okay. And he goes, the meat in the sandwiches was bad. <laughs> I said, did you guys eat all the sandwiches already? I go, Pop <laughs> Billy's on the phone about the sandwiches or something. No, you told me the meat was bad. I never said the meat was bad. Well. You jumped to conclusions. No, you said the sandwiches were bad or something. You told me that the food was bad because I immediately went, everyone's got food poisoning. Now what am I going to do? And I just had a small freak out. Like I was like, oh my this gosh. This is small, Tim, but you, you were angry with both of us for two weeks. Yeah. And I didn't even she have a part of it. Yeah, you, you, you were laughing. <laughs> you were laughing. They, yes, I got so mad at Garrett. Well, I couldn't like, talk to you. you want to do this right now? You thought a good time to prank me is right now. <laughs> and I said, yes, you're unsuspecting on April Fool's Day. Let's talk about Patreon, because you guys did a lot with that this year. Oh so yeah, you Patreon. Can, you can plug your Patreon, it's okay. This year is the year that I, this, I guess this year was the year of Patreon. I mean, I, I spoiled them this year with all of our top tier patrons. They got every SVG out there. They got the t-shirt. They got the shout outs, they got some extra content, a lot of Zoom calls. I made a, a lot more friends this year. Yeah, I was gonna like, say, what surprised me about Patreon is we built a family. Yes. We built a little Kim and Garrett, like, make it fam, for make sure. Make it fam, yeah. And, um, the hangers. Yeah, our, our hangers. Our top tier patrons join a top tier patron Facebook group, like a private group, and everyone is like a big group in there. They share information, they everybody ask knows questions. Everybody. Yes. Yeah, it's like... And I feel like not only did we make friends and make this fam, um, I feel like everyone in the group also, or a lot of them, made also, friends. yeah, yeah made friends. friends with each other and built a lot of connections. We shared a lot of business advice. Um, I just think it's been a great group. The Zoom calls yeah. started out with a few people. They now like they're six. now they're like I don't know twenty people. Like, no, last one it was almost like fifty people because yes, there was two screens of faces that you could go through. So, so we have tons of folks joining and asking questions and interacting um, and sharing information. Yeah, I love that everybody is willing to jump into the conversation. 
Like yeah. nobody, nobody on the calls are shy. They're all. It's not about us presenting on yeah. the Zoom calls. It's about it's a it's a group conversation. Yeah, just connecting. And that's what make those makes those fun. Yeah, we know it. Like, yeah, I feel like I feel like they became our friends. Yeah, we did meet a lot of new friends this year. So what do you have planned for 2023? Any big plans? Well, 2023. Uh, I let go of the reins. I started all of this YouTube thing that was, was me, and then this year, I'm letting go. It's yeah, there's a lot on Garrett's plate. He does the design work, he does the editing work. He helps design or inputs into the projects. He helps set up for the projects. I do all the pre-game stuff or pre-show. Pre planning and prep. Post-show, I, yes. I pre and post it all. Yes, and and you do, like I said, all the design work and editing, and so there's a lot on his plate. So this year, he, he was getting a little stressed out the end of this year. The video started especially, being late. Well, like we said, we just added a lot on our plate this year when we added craft shows, we added workshops. So our business is growing, and even with those things, I'm like, okay, you've got to, you've got to come help me in this workshop. So he has to stop what he's doing with editing, so he can come and, you know, be funny. Yeah, be the goofball in the workshops. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna change things up. We've done some planning for 2023, and I'm we're no gonna. I'm in charge of video. <laughs> You can see what he's excited about. So we've moved some positions around and Tanner, who's done all of our, um, I guess he's been our production manager. He manages the lasers and he's done all of the shipping and manages the shipping. Uh, he is moving into a producer role and video editing and that's gonna take a lot of that off of Garrett's plate. I'll, hopefully all of that off yeah. of your plate. And uh, all of the coming up with projects and thumbnails and the structure of the video. That's all up to Tanner and Courtney now. So they're gonna, they're gonna help us with that so that we can focus more on what it is that we wanna do and, and the content. Yeah. And they can, they can bring it to YouTube for so us. So hopefully they can we can- Take it across the finish line. We can give more content both here on Patreon, on the other social medias. Yeah. Just You'll be seeing a lot more of our faces because we won't be behind the laptops as much. Yeah. And the other big change, and I know you're about to ask, Tanner, I knew where you are going with that. Um, so one of the things we we worked hard at this year was making sure we had more than one video. 2022 was, we need to do two videos a, a week. So we went live on Tuesdays. We do a new um, door round design or two of them every kinda, Tuesday yeah, kinda turned live. Into a test Cut Tuesday. Yeah, our Test Cut Tuesday. We've had a lot of friends for that too. And then on Fridays, we do our regular, um, more curated project video uh, that comes out on Friday. So in 2023, we're not going to do Test Cut Tuesdays any longer. Sorry, we'll replace it. <laughs> but we are gonna keep that second video and we're gonna turn it more into a vlog. It's yeah, gonna be, hey, what's video. happening around here? What did we do this week? It's kind of like our patron after show. We're gonna do a little of that. Um, You'll get a taste on YouTube and then the whole thing on Patreon. Yeah, something like that. So something we're like gonna that. keep two videos. I don't yeah. even know. That's not even up to me. I'm just here to show up and read yeah. a script. Well, he, he's really trying to let go of the reins. <laughs> Probably not that much. I mean, <laughs> you might show up and it might be a, a mannequin <laughs> with a hat on. No, we've got, we're, we're, we're gonna work it out. Still two videos but probably not a Tuesday Live. Well, that about sums up all the questions I had for you. Anything you want to add to your year 2022 review? Our 2022 year review, it was a good year. I feel like it was a good growth year for oh, both. Yes. Uh, like every aspect of our business. If was you don't a good know, we moved from our home into this workshop space um, or business space, a dedicated business space here uh, in November of last year. So this was our first full year in this space. First full year owning like our own real business. Well, we, well, yeah. we still owned our own real business, but I guess but this is our first full year. Brick and of, mortar business. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, it was my people first. coming in, customers coming in. We, like we said, we continued yeah. to do our videos. We added a second video. We started st workshops. We started craft fairs. Yeah, we, um, we the craft shows. I mean, I, we did 13 craft shows this year. That was huge. And yeah, and then we started the workshop space and we've held, I don't know how many, I, I haven't know. counted how many it, no, workshops we've I think it was like had. 30 plus. I think last time we counted, I think we decided on 30 plus. Workshops? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big growth year. We have nothing but big dreams for 2023. We, like I just said, we just reorganized what folks were gonna do. Um, we have some nice goals and objectives that are, I feel like are achievable, achievable and I'm looking to expand and grow even further. Um, I, right now, Tanner's our full-time employee and he's our, oldest son only son and um, Courtney our oldest daughter we want to employ her full-time so that's my goal for 2023 there you go that's a good goal and everybody <laughs> gets money well we wanted to say thank you for supporting us this year it was a big growth year for us and you guys were a big part of that especially our patrons they they got to see a lot of behind the scenes on our growth and they always have our back yeah. not only do they support us on patreon outside of our youtube channel but they're there for our tuesday lives um, if you guys have been watching us for a while, you'll know that the biggest craft show of the year was rained out due to a hurricane. We had a last minute hurricane party yeah. and we did an online sale. That was all like That's impromptu right. for sure. And a lot of our patrons joined us for the online sale. We were live all weekend and they were there. Lois and Helen, and you know, Jason, Scott, Jason, Scott, yeah, all you guys. All jumped in and would comment and, and just kind of be there to support us. So Tyra, yeah. yes, thank all you the, for all of our viewers and thank for all you. the support. Yep. Thank you for your support and uh, hopefully we'll make you proud next year.